Four identical uniform rods, each of weight W, are freely jointed at their ends to form a square PQRS. The square is suspended from S and is held in the form of a square by a light rod MN, joining the midpoints of the rods PQ and QR. Calculate in terms of W the force in the light rod MN. Now, um, a key word here is that the rod is light. So that means that we can ignore its weight. Let's look at the forces acting on the rod MN. Well, we don't have any weight force because its weight is essentially negligible. Now, the other forces acting on rod MN are contact forces. Okay, PQ is applying a force to rod MN. Now, the question is in what direction? Well, um, the rod is just placed in here, so it's not going to be pulling on it in this direction, obviously. Since the rod MN is just placed, so there's a contact force like this. So PQ is pushing on the end of this rod. And by symmetry, we have a force of the same magnitude at the other end of the rod. Okay, so this force here has to look the same. Well, the same in magnitude, and has to make the same angle with rod MN. Now, there's a problem with the direction of these two forces. The problem is, is that they both have upward vertical components. But we've already said that there's no downward force on this horizontal rod since it is so light we can ignore its weight. So if that's the case, the contact forces on rod MN must be entirely horizontal. So it must be along the rod. Like this. Let's call this force F. And by symmetry, we have a force of equal magnitude acting at the other end of the rod. Okay, see, rods PQ and QR are identical, so we expect the same forces on either end of rod MN. And anyway, these forces must be the same in magnitude for equilibrium. You know, if one force had greater magnitude than the other force, then the rod would obviously move uh, in the horizontal direction. Now, we are interested in getting this force in terms of W where W is the weight of each rod. So let's just isolate the right hand, or sorry, the left hand side of the system. So we have the weight of this rod acting at the center of gravity. Um, we also have the weight of this rod here, acting at its center of gravity, of course, because the rods are uniform. So we can put the center of gravity at the midpoint of each rod. Now, PQ pushes on rod MN in a direction that's to, to the right. So by Newton's third law, rod MN pushes on PQ in a direction that's to the left. So we have an equal and opposite force to this force acting on rod PQ. Try and make the length the same. So this vector is supposed to have the same magnitude as this vector, so its magnitude is F. Now what about the forces at P? Well, they cancel out. Okay, these two rods are freely jointed at P, so we have a force on PS due to rod PQ, uh, which might be, say, in this direction. But um, by Newton's third law, we have an equal uh, uh, but opposite force on PQ due to PS. So, so we are not worried about the moments of these two forces. If we get the moments of these two forces about any point, um, we get zero, okay? So one force will have a positive moment, the other force will have a negative moment. But the magnitude of the moments of these two forces about any point will be the same. Because both vectors have the same magnitude and they're lying on the same line of action. So we can forget about those forces when we consider the moment of the forces on the system about any point. By the way, I don't know the direction of either of these two forces. I just drew this arbitrary direction. Um, but all that matters is that they sum to zero, and their moments will sum to zero. Now we are going to take moments about the point S, but first of all we must get the forces acting on rod PQ at the point Q. Now we don't know the direction of it. Well, um, we have to think about this. Um, let's suppose that the force on PQ, rod PQ, due to rod QR, has a vertical component. So suppose that its vertical component is down the way, like this. And that its horizontal component is, I don't know, let's suppose it's in this direction. Let's call its horizontal component X. 
Now let's look at the other half of the system. Okay, so here we have the horizontal and vertical components of the contact force at Q due to the other rod. But by Newton's third law, we have to have an equal and opposite force. But now, if the vertical component here is down the way, it's got to be up the way here to satisfy Newton's third law. So this is the situation for um, the contact force on rod QR due to rod PQ. But you can see that we've broken the symmetry. We should expect forces on both sides of the system to look the same, to be mirror images of each other. You know, because these four rods are identical and uniform. Um, so we can use a symmetry argument to conclude that the contact forces have no vertical component. Because if they do have a vertical component, we have this asymmetrical relationship between the two sides, between the forces on the two sides, you know. Um, by the way, this is the force on the horizontal rod. So, you know, we want all the forces to look the same under, you know, reflection in a mirror or under axial symmetry, if you want to call it that. Read W here as well. So that won't happen if the contact force on each of these rods has a vertical component. So by symmetry, we can see that the vertical component must be zero. And anyway, if you try to include a vertical component in this problem, you won't be able to solve it. You'll run into some horrible contradictions. Okay, that was certainly not immediately obvious. Um, so, you know, that makes this question quite difficult. Now, another point is the direction of x. Who is to say that um, this force points to the right? How do we know that it doesn't point to the left? Although, it wouldn't make much sense since the rods are supposed to be joined here. Um, you know, so we would expect the forces to point in a direction that attracts these uh, two points together, if you like, you know. So the points are stuck together, you know, if we'd forces like this, then obviously the system would, would um, just fly out like this two rods would fly out. But there's another reason why we can show that vector x must point to the right. Um, if we take moments about the point s, we will see that. Notice that w, well the two w's have um, anti-clockwise moments about the point s. So let's consider the moment of this force about the point s. So we need to get the perpendicular distance of S to the line of action of this force, so we, we need this distance here. Now, the shape that we are dealing with is a square, and the sides have the same length. So, if we draw this horizontal line here from P, this angle is 45 degrees. If we draw down here, this angle is 45 degrees. So we have an iso isosceles triangle. And this angle here is 45 degrees. Okay, this is a horizontal line. Okay, it's the same angle as this angle here. So let's make this distance from here to here 1. Now, it doesn't matter what the actual unit is. I mean, that this distance can be anything. But when we um, equate clockwise with anti-clockwise moments, you know, that distance will just cancel out anyway. So we can call it whatever we like. We, we, you could call it L, I suppose, if you want to. I'll just call it L, actually. Okay, um, so that's L, and this is L also, because we have an isosceles triangle here. This is 45 degrees, this is a right angle, so we have another 45 degree angle. So we multiply W by L. Now, what about the moment of this other W about S? Well, it's also W times L. See the perpendicular distance to its line of action is also L. Okay, these two forces are on the same line. What about X? X has an anti-clockwise moment. So we need this 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 distance here. Okay, so this is L, this is L. Project across here, this distance is L. 
and we have another L here. We project across here, we have L and L, we have four L. So these are the anti-clockwise moments of the forces about the point S. Now F is the only force that has a clockwise moment about the point S. So we multiply its magnitude F by the distance of S to its line of action, this distance here, which is three times L. So you can see that the L's just cancel out. Okay, so we, we take the sum of the magnitudes of the anti-clockwise moments and set it equal to the sum of the magnitudes of the clockwise moments. So we have an equation involving F, W and X. We just want F in terms of W. So we need a second equation. Now, um, what we will do next is just look at this part of the system. Of course, rod PQ is in equilibrium. Let's consider taking moments about the point P. That will give us an equation connecting F, W and X, a second equation connecting F, W and X, and we can eliminate X between the two equations to get an equation connecting just F with W. So we will have F in terms of W, so that's the idea. Now you can see clearly why X has to point to, to the right. It's not just common sense reasons, you know, because the two rods are connected at the point Q, you know, uh, rod PQ is connected to the other rod on the other side at this point, so you would expect them X to point to the right. Uh, the horizontal rod is tends to push the rods apart, so that from for common sense reasons we can see why X must point to the right. But we can also see if we take moments about P, you know, um, if X was pointing in the opposite direction we would be in trouble. Because you can see that the moments of these three forces are um, clockwise about the point P. They're certainly not equal to zero. If we sum the moments of these three forces about the point P, we will get a net uh, clockwise moment. But we don't want that. We want to get zero. So that's why it makes sense that X should point to the right. Okay, we have um, 45 degree right angled isosceles triangles here, so we can make the two short sides of them equal to L, say. Let's call it L. So let's get uh, the moment of F about the point P. Well, you know, that's going to be a clockwise moment. So it's going to be F multiplied by L. Okay, the perpendicular distance of P to the line of action of F is L. Now what about the moment of W about P? Well, the line of action of W is this line here, and the perpendicular distance of P to it is L. So here's the sum of clockwise moments about P, and X has an anti-clockwise moment to counterbalance that. The perpendicular distance of P to line of action of X is L plus L, or 2L. So X times 2L. So the L's cancel, so it doesn't matter what L is. And uh, we see that F plus W equals 2X. Okay, so we solve between these two equations to get rid of x. Um, what's the quickest way to do that? Well, let's copy this one out. 3f equals 2w plus 4 times x. Well, 4 times x is just 2 times 2x, where 2x is f plus w. So we get 2 times f plus w, so we get... Um, what do we get? 2f plus 2w plus 2w. We get 2f plus 4w. Subtract 2f from both sides and we get our answer. f equals 4w. So that's the end of the question. Now, as an aside, I'm going to um, get all the other forces acting in, in the system. So let's start with the forces at P. So, first of all, let's fill in here for F. We've established that F is equal to 4 times W. So let's kind of draw it to scale, make it some bit realistic looking. This, for, this force here is supposed to be 4 times this force. Now what about X? Well, we can get that from our equations. We can see from this equation that F or sorry, x equals f plus w divided by 2, 
So that's 4w plus w, or 5w divided by 2. So that's 2.5w. Uh, now let's look at the force on rod PQ due to the upper rod. So let's suppose that the force is in this direction here. Well, it's got horizontal and vertical component. What's the vertical component going to be? Well, we can get that from this diagram here. The only vertical force shown acting on the rod is W, which is vertically down. So this component has to be W vertically up. So let's try and make that a little bit more realistic. So it's going to look like this. Okay, actually, it'll be easier if I draw it here. Okay, so the magnitude of the upward component of the contact force at P must equal W, okay, for equilibrium. Um, what about the horizontal component? Well, we've two and a half W this way, but we've four W this way. So you see, we have an imbalance here with these two forces. Okay, so two and a half W plus one and a half W will give us four W. So now we have the horizontal and vertical components of the contact force on rod PQ at P. So if we sum these by completing this rectangle, we have the contact force at P due to the upper rod. Now, of course, we could go ahead and look at the forces acting on the upper rod, PS. Well, by Newton's third law, we have a force equal but opposite to this force at P. So it's going to look some, something like this. Okay, we are not too pushed about this force. We're going to take this system here, okay, because this force cancels with the other force. It's an internal force. So we look at this system now, consisting of these two rods. And we will get the forces at S. Well, um, the contact force on rod PS at S must have an upward component of magnitude 2W to counterbalance these two forces, each of magnitude w. We know that f is equal to 4w, so we must have a horizontal component here of magnitude 4w. Actually, we must be careful here because we've this force x was 2.5w, so I nearly forgot about that. So as a matter of fact, this force here has to be one and a half W. One and a half W plus two and a half W gives us four W. And for the vertical forces, W plus W gives us two W. So now we have the horizontal and vertical components of the contact force on rod PS at the point S. So we could sum them to actually find that contact force. So here it is. Okay, so this is this side of the system. As I said already, these two internal forces cancel out, so we don't have to indicate those. Um, okay, that's the left-hand side of the system. For the right-hand side, we just take a mirror image of what we have on the left-hand side. So in particular, the contact force on rod SR at the point S should look something like this. Okay, the mirror image of this force here. Um, so. Here are its two components, and so on. Um, we have force F, which is magnitude 4W that way. Weight vector W here, another W here.